Isn't it wonderful <clears throat> that in the grace of God he gave us music? Let's remember always to express appreciation to God for the music and to the choir for singing it and bringing us his message through song. I would invite you to turn with me to Isaiah, the 40th chapter. We'll be reading verses 1 through 5. Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 5. <clears throat> Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all of her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rough, rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Let us bow our heads. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for scripture. As you speak to us this morning through your word, we pray that our hearts and our minds would be open to receive. Because this we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. The 40th chapter of Isaiah is a turning point in the book. The first 39 chapters of Isaiah were chapters and messages of judgment. And now we come to ver uh, chapter 40. And the message for the next, uh, to the end of the book, the 66th chapter, is chapters of hope and mercy and forgiveness. You know, some messages are just too important that we dare not repeat them just once, but many times. Luke, in describing John the Baptist's mission, quoted from Isaiah, from this passage that we read. Someone is shouting in the wilderness, get the road ready for the Lord. In fact, four times, in the Gospels, this message is proclaimed. Actually, in each of the Gospels, the same message. You know, roads require a lot of repair and a lot of mending, a lot of road work. We talk of fence mending in our relationships, and when we say talk about fence mending, what we're actually talking about is rebuilding relationships, isn't it? Well, road mending comes in there too. And in road mending, we're talking about preparation, getting the road ready. In this case, in the case of our scripture, is getting the road ready for the king, for the master, for the Lord. God wants to visit us. He wants to visit us in a special way, but first of all, the road in our lives must be prepared. They must, the road in our hearts must be mended in order that we might receive Christ into our life. Some roads are literally etched into our memory. And I would like to share with you this morning the story of such a road in my life. Most roads have a name, but this road was just simply called the road. And yet, while it didn't have a name, it had a very special place in our lives, in my life, and in the life of my family. Because on that road lived my grandmother and my grandfather. And every time I hear that familiar verse, over the hills and through the woods, to grandmother's house we go, the horse knows the way to carry the sleigh. 
through the white and drifting snow. I think of that road and I think of my grandparents. In my earliest memory, the road was dirt. And it remained so for many years. I remember the road as it followed the long hill in front of the house. The hill that was filled with bench rock and so was the road. The road that had a campus city of trees like a tunnel. Beautiful in the fall with its colors and lonely in the evenings. I remember the road as it crossed the Tradewater River on the Wilson Warehouse Bridge with its loose planks and its high iron supports. I remember the ruts, ruts that lost themselves in mud holes, ruts that in the winter months became angry and hostile forming an alliance with all of the mud holes there, trying to keep us away from our grandparents' home. My grandfather would say, I need to work on the road, and he did. It seemed that road repair never ended. Really, my grandfather wanted a new road. And one of the favorite topics on Sunday morning after church as we sat around the dinner table, it was the location of a new road. A lot of dreaming went on there. My uncle favored the valley route that followed the edge of the farm, straightening the curves, smoothing out the bench rock, straightening the way. Others wanted to follow the route of the old road, along the ridge, straightening out the curves to some extent and smoothing the bench rock down in front of the house, leveling the hills and filling the valleys. About everybody agreed, though, that a new road was, in, was needed. But where do you build a road? The prophet Isaiah tells us that a road should be prepared in the wilderness. The Lord needs a road in the wilderness of our lives. God needs a road that he can come and visit us. You see, our lives are often a wilderness, a wilderness of crooked paths, a wilderness of obstacles, valleys of depression and immoral actions, a wilderness of mountains with pride, mountains of unforgiveness and unbelief. Several years ago, many years before I retired as pastor of the Marietta Church, the office stood just off near the back of the church, just off of the sanctuary. Marietta, we can only do things upside down there. We have worship, they have worship first and then Sunday school. And that particular Sunday morning as I left, uh, as this worship was over and I stopped by the office on my way to the Sunday school class and there laying on the desk was that Sunday's bulletin, only it was turned over where the back was showing. And written on the back of the bulletin was these words, church is a habit, pray for me. Christ has lost meaning. Pray for me. I feel lonely inside. Pray for me. Where has he gone? I do not feel strong. For him I long. Pray for me. You see, God is calling us. In the wilderness of our life, God is calling us to build a road. To build a road for the Master. To build a road for the Lord. God calls the church today to build a road. Tell them, God says, they have suffered long enough and their sins are now forgiven. We need a road in the wilderness of our life that God's message can be real and, and, and come to us. God calls his people back home from exile. 
The Lord, though, needs the road. He needs it in the wilderness of our lives. You see, we need a road in the wilderness that provides direction for us, a road on which God's salvation can enter our lives and our hearts and in the lives of his people, a road that leads home when God is home. Isaiah tells us that a voice is calling in the desert, get the road ready for the Lord. You see, we need the voice and we need the road. We need the voice to remind us that our lives are like roads. They need constant repair. They need preparation. In the wilderness of our life, we need the road for the Lord so God's salvation can come and be a part of our lives. My grandfather was a wise person. I like to think that uh, that's a family trait. In fact, I tell my wife every once in a while that uh, it's just a part of the genes. She looks at me and says, Don, I don't need a problem. I got you. See, the location of the, of the road, of the new road that my grandfather dreamed of, was not the central focus of his life. Whether the road followed the valley or the ridge, he didn't care. So long as it was built in the wilderness of his life. My grandfather saw the road in a different light than we see roads a lot of the time. Often people want a road to escape the wilderness of life. Sometimes we see our priorities and our values. We see them leave us one by one, so gentle, so gradual that we don't realize that we are sinking into the wilderness. And then we look for a road in the wilderness to escape. We feel that if we can just get away, everything will be okay. My granddad had seen his six children, one by one, leave home till the nest was empty. He wanted a road in which his family could come back home and see him. He wanted a road by which he could be visited. For whom do we build a road? Isaiah reminds us that a road is to be prepared for the Lord. Not our road, but the Lord's road. A road is to be prepared for God to come into our lives. The road in the wilderness of our lives is, is not built for us. It's built for the Lord. We certainly don't need a road in our, the wilderness of our lives to escape. We would just carry the guilt of a sin with us into that far country as did the prodigal son. The exiles were told to prepare a road in the wilderness for the Lord. It, wouldn't, it wasn't a road of escape. It was a road that the Lord could come and visit them. You see, the road needs to be prepared for the Lord because he is the hope of our salvation. Not the far country, but right here, in the wilderness of my life, God seeks a road that he can come in and he commune with me and I with him. We need a road on which the redemptive grace of God can come into our lives and mend the broken relationship and level mountains of pride, of unbelief and unforgiveness, make straight the crooked paths in our lives and fill the valleys of our life with forgiveness, honesty, kindness, hope, and love. You see, a road that leads home because it leads to God and God is home. My grandfather was a practical person. He knew that he could not build the road, nor could his neighbors build it. 
He could not make the crooked road straight and he could not fill the valleys or level the hills. He could not even make the rough country smooth. Another would have to build the road. Well, grandfather could not build the road. There was something he could do and he did it. He could be a voice that encouraged others to prepare the way. And so he did. And so it was. He could surrender part of his apple orchard that the crooked road could be made straight, and he did. He could sacrifice some of the soil from his farm so that the, the low places could be filled and the road could be made level. And so he did. He could even open the door of his home and invite the builders to stay with him while they worked on the road. And so he did, and so they did. But who can build a road? God tells us in the book of Isaiah, watch for the new thing I am going to do. It's happening already. You can see it now. I will make a road through the wilderness and give you streams of water there. You see, the Lord our God has built the road. God has built the road. God has called us to help prepare the way for the road in the wilderness of our lives. You see, God builds the road, but we have to give him the right of way. We have to give God the right of way, the right to come into our hearts and to our lives. He stands at the door and knocks. And if we will open the door, you know the rest of it. If we will open the door, he will come in. and He will sup with us and we with thee. The Lord has built a highway of deliverance. A road from slavery in Egypt to the promised land. A road from the exile in Babylon to the city of Jerusalem. From a stable in Bethlehem to a cross on Calvary. A road from death to life. A road through Jesus Christ leads home because Christ is home. A road on which we live in hope for the coming of the kingdom as we do the ordinary task of our daily life. The old spiritual puts it like this. There's a king and captain high, and he's coming by and by, and he'll find me hoeing cotton when he comes. You can hear his legions charging in the regions of the sky, and he'll find me hoeing cotton when he comes. There's a man they thrust aside who was tortured till he died. And he'll find me hoeing cotton when he comes. God comes to us in the everyday task of life. My grandfather had, long, <clears throat> had longed for the road and it was built in his lifetime. Today... The road and the valleys have been filled. And the hills were leveled. And the rough bench rock in front of the house is now smooth. It still hasn't, doesn't have a name. But it was incorporated in, but it has a number. It was incorporated into Kentucky 70 a few years ago. <coughs> Jane and I were driving through South Central Kentucky. We came to Highway 70. I turned to Jane and I says, I know where that road goes. That road goes home. God built a, wild, a road in the wilderness of our life. And that road leads home. It is the most important road that we will travel because God built it and it leads home. God is home. Listen 
We can almost hear Isaiah saying, get the road ready for the Lord, make straight paths for him to travel, all mankind will seek God's salvation. And so be it. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, grant that our hearts and our minds will be open and that we would give you right away a building your road in the wilderness of our lives. Because this we pray in the name of Christ. Amen.